One thing that happened recently that was really pretty much the best thing is uh, Deadpool came out. Yeah, and Max, you and I have not... We have not talked about Deadpool no. anywhere on IGN yet. And people it keep sucks. asking us. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't suck. It sucks that no, we haven't talked about it. No, it sucks about it. Yes. But Deadpool's awesome. Yeah, we saw it opening night, first showing. Uh, we were both giggling like schoolgirls. Uh, we keep doing this thing where we take our significant others uh, with us on dates that we're really going on with each other. They are going to get us back so hard one day. They're going to yeah. be like, there's a six hour marathon of, like, you know, uh, Harry Met Sally yeah. and all the other garbage movies. We're taking that... them to a monster truck rally this weekend. We're really we're bad. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> So good. It's, I mean, I don't think yeah. we're on outliers here. This is everyone seems to be really enjoying this. I've I've loved Deadpool as a character since I was seven years old. I mean, you're you've always been a big fan of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think it was like um, he Deadpool came out in in the nineties around the same time that we needed him. Just like comic book movies needed him now. I think the way we came out of that kind of tailspin of eighties and early nineties comics, which was very sort of like heroic, uh, very post-Vietnam, very, uh, like, there was a lot of sort of uh, connection to, th- if you even, even looked at, like, WWF characters, just these sort of, like, one-dimensional, big, brawny guys mm-hmm. who didn't really have a lot of depth to them. Deadpool came out, out, out of nowhere, started breaking the fourth wall, started making fun of all the other characters. We are now in the second, third wave of legitimately good comic book movies, but they're starting to feel a little bit of fatigue there. Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was at that point where comic books had gone from being, like, you know, they were kind of campy, and you, you get kind of Silver Age, and there was late 70s stuff that was still kind of goofy spandexy yeah. stuff by by the 90s things were you know late 80s things were like post dark knight returns everything got really gritty and dark and everybody got real muscular it was rob liefeld era who was one of the creators of deadpool yeah uh, and then deadpool showed up and he was he was a comic relief you know but he was still also a character in that universe it was just it was just that kind of little little pinch of humor to kind of spice up an otherwise fairly fairly intense Marvel Universe at yeah. the time. Which I think absolutely I love about his character from the jump and I think it translates so well to the big screen that I my biggest fear was that this would be one of those sort of slapstick mile a minute joke movies and in some ways it was but the way it moves so quickly was that when a joke flat, fell flat, uh, you didn't have time to process it because so much else was happening mm-hmm. on screen. Deadpool isn't just comedic relief. He's not just a clown. He's like, this is a movie about a guy whose relationship falls apart from cancer, like, how how many comic book movies can you say have that that level of of, of depth to them? You know, and I, I think that like in the way it told its story, sort of the the sequencing and the pacing of the narrative of saying like this is an origin story, but it's also an action movie. But instead of making you wait an hour and a half for an action movie the way uh, I would say most Spider-Man movies do, you know, and we've seen a bunch of different versions of that story being told, the way this was jump cut and interspersed between the past and the present made you never really have to worry about, like, what's coming up next yeah. because you always saw a glimpse of it in the future and you got to see it all get filled in. I mean, I'd say that just the fact that, like, it's a very, very puerile, very wonderfully stupid movie. Yeah. Uh, very gruesome, very slapstick, but, like, at the same time, from a cinematic angle, the fact that it wasn't a linear story is a, kind of a, a leap and a bound ahead of most other superhero movies, which are pretty, like, cut and dried in terms of how they're structured. And the fact that it was also a low-budget superhero movie that managed to be an origin story, it managed to be a comedy, it managed to be... Uh, tackling stuff like cancer and right. romance like it did a lot of stuff and it managed to pull it all off which it was is, it was, was also it was, it was able to call out the fact that it was a low budget movie you know yeah. it was able to make fun of that uh, and it had connections to the modern uni- uh, the marvel universe that i think they could only legally get away with under Fox, like such as that aircraft carrier at the end. Yeah. Absolutely a, a set piece from Winter Soldier or a leftover from that. Yeah, and then you've got Hydra Bob showing up, but just yep. calling him Bob. You know, yep. it's just a lot of really wonderful Easter eggs. I, this thing happens with Marvel movies, and I, I, I've really enjoyed most Marvel movies, but uh, they, don't, like, they don't feel deep. You know, like they're, they're really enjoyable, but they're, they rarely feel like they're just mired in Easter eggs or mm-hmm. that there's a lot to look at or a lot to take in. Uh, I really want to see Deadpool again while it's in theaters. I'm definitely going to buy it when it comes out and kind of like scrub through it because there's so many little tiny things like just yeah. hidden away in there. And I feel like that's something that's that's sort of missing from, you know, from superhero mm-hmm. movies. Now, like, like thinking about this in terms of a superhero origin story, I really think that it was probably my favorite one um, in the way we described, the way it jumped around. But just that it, it was funny, it was smart, it was raunchy, and it still had a ton of heart. And I think that most other superhero films 
take a part of that. You know, like Superman's origin story on film was was gorgeous and wonderful and very heartfelt originally. I don't I didn't think so much when they rebooted it, it worked as well. Uh, Spider Man's worked to a degree. I think Wolverine had a pretty cool origin story, uh, but it was kind of tucked away inside bigger picture X Men movies. Yeah, so, they always just did the flashbacks. Yeah, I don't know. Let us know what you think. Use the hashtag up at noon. Leave yeah. a comment below. What's your favorite superhero origin movie? I really think mine's Deadpool. And yeah. now that I've had some time to think about it, yeah, I really can't wait to go see it again. Yeah, Deadpool's really good. Thank <laughs> you.